In the realm of international affairs, the Middle East has been a battleground for numerous conflicts, with many nations vying for control and influence, often centered around oil reserves. The United States, for as long as many can recall, has been deeply entwined in this region. Much of this involvement stems from the pursuit of oil, a vital resource that has driven economies and fueled military endeavors. However, there's a shift underway, a positive one. America is gradually reducing its reliance on foreign oil, opting instead to prioritize self-sufficiency in energy production. Let's dive into how and why this transformation is occurring. Initially, you might assume that America's dependence on foreign oil arose because domestic sources, like those in Texas and Alaska, couldn't keep up with the nation's soaring energy demands. While this is partly true, there's more to the story. Importing oil allowed the U.S. to allocate its energy resources elsewhere, supporting economic growth in sectors such as manufacturing and technology. However, this reliance on imported oil has often led to entanglements in the domestic politics of other countries, as policymakers sought to stabilize oil prices. Yet, over time, policymakers have reevaluated this approach. They've recognized the risks associated with relying on foreign oil, particularly in terms of supply chain disruptions and geopolitical tensions. The benefits of diverting energy resources to other sectors no longer outweigh the drawbacks of dependency on foreign oil. Consequently, there is a growing consensus in favor of energy independence. To understand why energy independence is crucial for the United States, let's rewind the clock to 1973, a tumultuous time in the Middle East marked by the Yom Kippur War between Israel, Syria, and Egypt. The Nixon administration, in a move to support Israel, provided a substantial $2.2 billion aid package, much to the dismay of Arab oil-producing nations. In retaliation, these nations halted oil shipments to countries supporting Israel, triggering a crisis. Gas prices skyrocketed by 40% in the U.S., causing long queues at gas stations and sparking concerns among top government officials about the nation's reliance on Middle Eastern energy. Although diplomacy eventually resolved the oil embargo, the damage was done. It exposed the vulnerability of relying on foreign energy sources, prompting President Nixon to launch Project Independence. The goal? To make the U.S. energy self-sufficient by 1980. Strategies including building thousands of nuclear power plants, enforcing lower speed limits on highways, shifting from oil to coal in power generation, and investing in public transportation. Despite these efforts, the U.S. still found itself importing more oil after the embargo, with dependence reaching nearly 50% by 1979. Concerns over nuclear energy safety, fueled by disasters like Chernobyl and geopolitical shocks such as the Iranian Revolution, further complicated matters. Project Independence missed its mark by the 1980 deadline, proving to be a disappointment. Ironically, the diplomacy that helped lift the embargo inadvertently contributed to America's energy independence. By offering long-term security guarantees to Saudi Arabia in exchange for a steady oil supply, the U.S. became even more entangled in the region. This commitment led to military interventions including the Gulf War, aimed at safeguarding oil fields from threats like Saddam Hussein's annexation of Kuwait. In the late 1970s, President Jimmy Carter stepped up to address America's energy independence dilemma. He introduced the Energy Security Act, aiming to bolster the nation's resilience. This initiative led to the establishment of the U.S.'s Strategic Petroleum Reserve and marked the government's first foray into green energy research. Despite Carter's efforts, progress towards energy independence remained sluggish, and in some respects, the situation deteriorated further before any signs of improvement emerged. It seemed like every administration that tackled the issue had to go back to square one. Fast forward to the 2000s, and the scenario hadn't changed much. The new Bush administration prioritized energy independence, making it a cornerstone of its foreign policy agenda. President Bush wasted no time setting up the Energy Task Force in 2001 to reduce America's reliance on foreign oil. However, this endeavor faced numerous obstacles, including the undue influence of major oil companies on policy recommendations. 
The failure of these efforts became evident with the 2003 invasion of Iraq, which many criticized as an attempt to secure access to the country's oil reserves. Despite the controversy surrounding the invasion and its aftermath, including the establishment of new oil contracts with U.S. companies, it inadvertently paved the way for a significant shift in domestic oil production. This shift marked a genuine revolution in U.S. oil production, the effects of which are still felt today. To highlight the progress made, consider this. In 2005, the U.S. consumed 44% more energy than it produced. By 2022, however, the tables had turned, with the U.S. producing 2.5% more energy than it consumed. Additionally, 2022 marked the first year since 1952 that the U.S. exported more oil than it produced. As recently as 2010, America was importing a whopping 9.4 million barrels of oil per day more than it exported. Fast forward to 2020 and that deficit had transformed into a surplus of 650,000 barrels per day. So what sparked this remarkable turnaround? The answer lies in the shale revolution. Breakthroughs in fracking technology unlocked access to vast reserves of shale gas buried deep underground. Starting from around 2007, the U.S. witnessed a rapid increase in domestic oil production. In fact, the abundance of oil became so significant that President Obama repealed the crude oil export ban in 2015, a measure originally put in place after the oil embargo of the 1970s. Today, America boasts greater energy independence than it has in decades, dating back to before 1950. However, defining exactly what energy independence entails isn't as straightforward as it seems. It's often used as a political slogan rather than a precisely defined economic or technical concept. Traditionally, energy independence is seen as producing more energy than a nation consumes or exporting more energy than it imports. By both of these measures, the U.S. has indeed achieved energy independence for several years now. Yet the reality is a bit more nuanced. For instance, while the U.S. is a net exporter of oil and petroleum products, these products encompass a wide range of items beyond just crude oil. Natural gas, in particular, has emerged as a significant export commodity. In fact, in recent times, the U.S. has become the world's largest exporter of natural gas. When we consider oil alone, however, the picture gets a bit murkier. The U.S. still imports a considerable amount of crude oil, albeit decreasingly so. This seeming contradiction arises because, although the U.S. produces enough crude oil to meet its needs, much of it isn't the right type for domestic refineries to process efficiently. So, while progress towards energy independence is evident, there are still complexities to navigate. Crude oil, the lifeblood of modern economies, comes in different varieties, graded by two key factors, weight and sweetness. The weight of oil determines how easy it is to refine into usable components like gasoline, jet fuel, and diesel. Light crude is the easiest to handle, while heavy crude presents more challenges. Sweetness, on the other hand, refers to the sulfur content of unrefined oil. The sweeter the oil, the lower its sulfur content. Most of the oil produced in the United States, particularly in fields like those in Texas and Oklahoma, is both light and sweet. In contrast, oil imported from regions like the Middle East and Russia tends to be heavier and less sweet. For many years, the U.S. relied heavily on imported oil to meet its energy demands. Consequently, a significant portion of the country's refining infrastructure is designed to process heavier, less sweet crude. This presents a problem. Many U.S. refineries aren't equipped to efficiently handle the type of oil produced domestically. Adapting these refineries to process U.S. produced crude would be a mammoth and costly endeavor, requiring years to complete. Additionally, different fuels aren't interchangeable. You can't power your car with nuclear energy or switch your home heating source on a whim. So while it might seem logical to measure energy independence as a single metric, the reality is more complex. Saying the U.S. is completely energy independent overlooks the fact that it still needs to import a significant amount of crude oil. This reliance exposes the country to fluctuations in international markets and geopolitical tensions overseas. Geography also plays a role. Much of the domestic oil production occurs in the central regions of the U.S. 
further complicating the logistical challenges of distribution and refining. Thus, achieving true energy independence requires addressing these intricacies rather than oversimplifying the issue. Nestled within the heartland of the United States lies a sprawling network of pipelines that connect the nation's oil production centers to its refineries, scattered across the Midwest, Gulf Coast, and East Coast. These intricate arteries facilitate the flow of crude oil, ensuring its transformation into various refined petroleum products like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. However, the reach of these pipelines doesn't extend to the West Coast refineries, leaving them somewhat isolated from the domestic oil production hubs. Consequently, the West Coast relies heavily on imported oil from overseas to meet its energy needs. Now, why does the West Coast lean on imports? The answer lies in economics. Despite the costs associated with shipping oil across vast distances, imported oil from abroad frequently proves to be more affordable than domestically produced crude. One key factor contributing to this cost disparity is the concept of lifting costs, the expenses involved in extracting oil from the ground. In many foreign countries, particularly those with abundant oil reserves and lower production costs, these lifting costs are significantly lower than in the United States. Even on the East Coast, where pipelines do extend from domestic production regions, challenges like transportation bottlenecks and high logistical costs can sometimes make imported oil a more cost-effective option for refineries. Thus, achieving complete energy independence, the ideal of relying solely on domestically sourced energy, remains a complex and elusive goal, at least in the current landscape. Nevertheless, it appears that the United States is content with its current energy framework. After all, one of the primary motivations behind the pursuit of energy independence is to safeguard against supply disruptions, such as those experienced during the 1970s Arab oil embargo. Fortunately, such threats are less pressing today. Moreover, the United States is gradually pivoting towards renewable energy sources, such as wind and solar power signaling a broader shift away from fossil fuels. This strategic diversification of energy sources not only enhances energy security, but also lays the groundwork for a more sustainable and resilient energy future. While challenges and intricacies persist, one conclusion is clear. America has come a long way in securing its energy independence. But this is just the beginning. The energy landscape continues to rapidly evolve with each passing year. Stay tuned and subscribe for the latest updates as we track America's historic march towards energy sovereignty. We welcome your thoughts and perspectives in the comments below. Don't forget to like and enable notifications to never miss an upload.